The Brainworks BX Stereo Maker is a great plugin to use whenever you're playing guitar. I'm playing guitar live right now. Throw the Stereo Maker right on a track, a mono track by the way, and you can have that double tracked sound. You can of course throw it on an already recorded uh, guitar track as well, or any track, which we'll look at uh, in a minute. But you can throw it right on uh, your channel there, so whenever you're playing, Get that nice double track sound, bypass it. Still sounds great. But it's not that double track sound that we get, uh, you know, on a, on a completed record. Right? For guitar, I like to set the tone to around, you know, 125 or so. Leave the high damp alone. We'll look at this stuff later on. In the mono frequency, we can keep certain frequencies mono before the you know the, the stereo expansion there. Uh, for guitar, I like to keep it somewhere 100 and lower, uh, maybe oh maybe around uh, 50 to 80, maybe up to 100. Really, kind of depends on what you're what you're doing. But if I turn that down, for example, and I play on the eighth string. versus taking this up a bit, get it a little bit tighter sounding. So you still get that bass, you know, that, that low note hitting you sort of right in the middle of the head there. Same for our tone. Around 100 is probably good for guitar. As I go up, you can hear what happens there. Same for the mono frequency. Take it way up here. Down, turn this go here. Right, pretty cool. Of course, we have a stereo expansion. Now, you don't want to go too far with this. Always check your correlation meters down here. You want this green to stay around this plus area. You don't want it to be going down to the minus one area. Uh, you're going to have balance issues, especially if you go down to uh, mono. We have our output gain because sometimes, obviously, uh, it can be uh, too loud once you split this up into uh, stereo. So it's going to be too loud now. Almost too loud. Depends on you know what you're feeding it. Clipping a little bit there. You can adjust that output gain right there. Sounds great too, man. Works. I mean, it works. Turn that down. Works great with a guitar. I love uh, throwing a delay on or something. Uh, throwing on the stereo maker and it just, you know, just sounds awesome. Nice and wide. If I had that on bypass, so now it's just mono. Sounds good. that up all right so what do you say we take a look at this on some other sources and we'll go through the other things that stereo maker can do all of the options here okay so now we look at stereo maker a little a little bit closer now if you're going to put this on a guitar track first you would want of course a mono track at least here in Pro Tools, it would be a mono track. And we would grab whatever uh, amp simulator that we wanted. We'll just load one up here. Then after that, we would put Stereo Maker. I mean, technically, you could put it before, but you'll probably want to uh, uh, put it after. So now watch what happens whenever we choose a Stereo Maker. You see it's mono to stereo. Now this channel here is now a stereo channel. So Stereo Maker is really meant for, uh, you know, mono, mono signals. And we'll take a look at the manual here. All right, lossless mono stereo up mixing. It allows you to add pseudo spatiality and width to tracks that have been recorded as mono sources. Brainworks has uh, BX Control and BX Digital if you want to spread uh, stereo signals uh, and mixes. Okay, so use it mono audio signals. 
there. We'll just go through this really quickly. You know, manual in two sentences is add it to a mono track, adjust the stereo width to your liking, uh, choose a tone setting that sounds right, and balance the center using the pan tilt control. That's basically all you need to know. But we'll go through this a little, a little bit more. So all parameters except for the tone can be switched uh, off by clicking the panel above their respective, uh, respective knobs. Let's go ahead and put Stereo Maker on this mono synth track here. All right, so mono mono channel plugin. In my case, I'm just going to go to Plugin Alliance here, and we'll throw it right on there. Comes up with a nice default setting. Bypass it. If we open up Insight here. see the uh, stereo signal that we're getting there put this over here so you can see that so we still have a good a good uh, center image bypass it right down the middle back on add some width all right head back to the manual there so our tone, so we select the slicing frequency interval in 11 steps, okay, in order to adapt to different sound sources. Basically, just use your ear uh, to find uh, you know, what sounds good. You can see they achieve you know, this stereo upmixing by slicing the source signal's spectral energy, ensuring that mono compatibility is retained, of course, as long as we're not you know, using that tilt and pan knob and our center remains uh, rather untouched. So that's our tone, which we'll go through the tone. Take it up here. Sounds a bit different. So for this, I kind of like around 80 or 100. But you basically just, uh, you know, just choose whatever uh, sounds good to you there. Let's go ahead and put Stereo Maker. I'm just going to drag it on to our piano tracker. We'll just bypass it there. And put that on solo. Output gain. Turn it on. So instantly, nice stereo effect. Bypass it again. Turn it back on. Go through here and just run a hundred will probably work well for piano. We can turn off these other ones if we want. We'll turn off the stereo. And back to the manual so we can just go through these. Our high damp, so that will roll off the spatial effect in the higher frequencies above 5K. All right, so warmer sound, less tinny. Our mono frequency, this will be an important setting, so be sure to mess with that knob. So you use this parameter to keep a, a tighter image in that bass range. So let's suggest around 80. Below 80 can stay mono. Uh, stereo expansion, that's you know self-explanatory. You can up that as much as you want, but of course, keep in mind that whenever you uh, up that more and more your output may go up so you may need to adjust your output gain all right our tilt and pan so far if, if our image is sort of off of balance we can use our tilt or our pan in pan mode the mono source's center point is panned towards the left or right you know just like a pan knob but in tilt mode the signal is kept more in the center but the spatial part so like the sides if you will of the signal are being panned around the center point now okay so you can just again flip through those output gain that's self-explanatory. Our LR button, so we can exchange the left and right channels before they're fed into the uh, tilt and pan section. Solo M, so that's going to be soloing our mid signal, and then solo S is for the sides or that uh, you know that pseudo spatial content. All right, that's pretty much it. We have the the meters there, so our left right peak, our left right RMS, of course our balance meters and our correlation meter, which we've already talked about a little bit. We want to keep that more towards uh, the green. And of course, we have lights that let us know if we are clipping. We also have presets, you know, bypass, undo, redo, A, B, C, and D settings, which we'll look at real quick uh, as well. Head back over here and come back to our piano. And if we want to damp that high end, damp that up a little bit. We want to change our mono frequency. Keep more of a mono. And if you want to look at that in insight, we can do that too. So you can kind of see what is going on here. We can take 
its stereo expansion way up one. You see how wide that's getting? Now our output is a bit high, Let's turn it down. Of course you can also turn this down the other way, so it's not as wide. Don't want no high damp on that. There we go. We can tilt this. You see how it's tilting? Tilt it the other way. You see that content, how it's being tilted. If we change this to pan, let me... I can also use my mouse wheel, by the way, to adjust these. Put this on pan here. Now we'll just pan it. You'll see the difference. See the difference there? That's pan. If we put it back to tilt, and the spatial content being tilted. A lot of stuff that you don't necessarily need to know exactly how it works, but it's, you know, it's good to see it. So whenever you get in there and you're using Stereo Maker on your tracks, uh, you, you know, you kind of know uh, what it does. You know, this works great on everything, really, uh, from synthesizers to we already heard guitar. Uh, if you want to use it on bass, you can, you can even use it on drums, individual drums or, you know, the whole mix. If you want, of course, it works well on vocals uh, as well. Play back again here. You can switch that left and right. Solo, just that mid signal, right? Or maybe just the sides. We'll just hear the sides. You can see our meters right there, our correlation meter down here. If I take this way up again, you see we start going down to the red. It's staying in the red. It's not just dipping down there, it's staying down there. We don't want that. You can see that over here too, over here. This is not going to be balanced properly at all. All right, so that's basically all you really, really need to know about BX Stereo Maker. I love this plugin. I love using it on all kinds of content. Great for effects, great for, you can throw it on a mono guitar track and have that sort of pseudo uh, uh, a double tracking. It's not exactly 100% the same, but it's really, really close. Uh, it, it would actually work okay in a mix. If you just recorded a guitar once and you threw Stereo Maker on there, it would actually work. Again, it's not 100% the same, but it would actually, you know, it would actually work. Now, while Stereo Maker is, of course, meant for mono material, you can actually put it on a stereo track as well. Now, right here, I have Stereo Maker on a stereo track. It's not going to sound good, but you can use this uh, for effects. So this is, if I just bypass it, it's just drums here. All right, you can turn this on. You can do some weird stuff with this. Start messing around with, with the tone. Panning and tilting things. Again, not what it was meant for, but maybe something you want to uh, try. But let's get back to using it how it's really meant uh, to be used. Take that off there. And let's use it on this little vocal phrase right here. Now, what if I have a mono vocal phrase? And let's just grab a, let me go up here to reverbs. Let's grab a reverb. Of course, reverb may sound okay. It may not sound okay on a mono source. And a lot of reverbs, because they are a spatial effect, they, they will have a mono to stereo option, but maybe we want to choose the mono option here and then use Stereo Maker uh, instead of using the uh, stereo option. So right now, just bypass it. Put that down in the middle there. Great uh, vocals down there. Turn this on. Sounds okay, but we're not getting that, you know, that width that we want. So instead of using the mono to stereo version, maybe we'll just use Stereo Maker. Let's give that a shot. So, so this is, of course, a mono track. So throw that on there. Now we may want to put that reverb after Stereo Maker, but let's just hear what this sounds like here. Sounds okay. Definitely uh, wider, but I'm actually going to put this underneath. Pull both of these up here. Our targets. That, of course, switches us uh, to the uh, different version of the, uh, of the reverb there, as you can see here. Now it's the multi-mono plugin. But just as, you know, just as an example. 
Now we have these options here that we can use. Damp the high, change the tone, really make it wide there. Of course, that's way too wide. But just as an example, we could even just bypass the reverb and we'll bypass this. So again, right down the middle, turn this back on. Gives us some nice width there. Just hear those sides again. Very cool, very cool. And of course you can use Stereo Maker after uh, maybe something like Contact or, or any other virtual instrument uh, that you want that may be mono. You can of course put Stereo Maker underneath that and make that stereo if there's not a, you know, if there's not a stereo version uh, available. But this track here is already stereo, so we don't need to hear that. I love using this for guitar, for vocals, for uh, you know, anything really. It's, uh, it's one of those really great plugins that's a real good utility to have around. Uh, it may sound like something simple, and it's not the same as simply copying a track. You know, duplicate the track and then uh, try to play it back left and right. It's going to sound radically different. I mean, I can do that. We can take this, say, piano track, for example. Right-click this, and we'll just duplicate the track. Okay. We'll have two of those. Take Stereo Maker off of that, and we'll take it off of this. Pan one left, one right, and solo those two. And we'll come down here. And let's grab Isotope just so you can see this, and then we'll finish up here. We'll grab Insight. Don't need that. What we need is our sound field. So what we've done here, we just took two mono tracks and then panned them. Okay, that's not the same. As you can see, our center image, you know, it's, it's tight. It's right down the middle. We don't have sounds on the sides. Not the same thing. So we'll just mute that track. We don't need it. We'll grab Stereo Maker again here. Plug-in Alliance, Stereo Maker, and we'll do this again. The default settings work well uh, for a lot of things. You can just go in here and sweeten things up a bit. Of course, want well, my mono frequency somewhere, you know, somewhere around here. 80 or so works well for most things. Sometimes up to 100. Just play around with it a little bit. Make it even uh, wider there. Very good. Let's hit our target. Open up inside again. So you can definitely see the difference here. So now it sounds different. It looks different. Now we have a pseudo stereo. I mean, the normal person is not going to know the difference between was this actually recorded in stereo or was it a mono performance? They're not going to know. This plugin does a very, very good job. cool. So that is the Brainworks BX Stereo Maker. It's great for all kinds of mono sources. You can use it on stereo sources if you want to do some kinds of effects, but it has, you know, lots of features in here. The left, right switch there. Uh, here, just the mid and of course the sides. You can tilt things. You can again, turn these on or off. And one thing I guess I'll mention before we go is there are presets up here that you can choose. And within each preset is actually four different sets that belong to that master preset four different snapshots if you will okay you can reset these you can copy and paste these so if you set something up of course you can undo and redo i believe it's 32 steps that you have here if you set something up and you want to try different settings real quick we'll say this we'll just copy this here we'll go to b and we'll paste that in and then maybe i want to try this with a higher uh, on our higher setting on our mono frequency so we want to keep everything below 97 or so there and maybe a little higher there. Then we can switch back and forth real quick with these. And you should be able to use automation with that. Okay, same thing for C and D. So you can set up sort of, uh, you know, snapshots or sets within a master preset. All right. So that is the Brainworks BX Stereo Maker. You can go check it out at Plugin Alliance. It's definitely a plugin worth checking out and adding to your toolkit.